think the first thing you have to talk about is, is the role of snakes in ecosystems, um, especially large-bodied rattlesnakes, pit vipers, that we study. They oftentimes, especially in this part of the world, they sort of act as apex predators in the systems that they exist within. So they're, they're big, they can eat a huge diversity of vertebrate prey items, and because they're these really cool ectothermic low energy specialists we've been talking about, they're cold blooded, they don't need to eat all that often, they can exist at incredibly high densities as we found in the forests around here. And if we begin to lose them, I don't think anybody knows what those ecosystems devolve into. For the longest time we've been using radio telemetry and so that's sort of like the, the entry level tech that everybody has to kind of get used to using and so that involves, it's pretty simple, it's just like a handheld antenna and then a receiver and a transmitter implanted in one of our snakes. And that allows us to relocate them whenever we want out in the field. All we can really do is go out there and locate them at a fixed point in time. So we can say where the snake was on this date at this particular time and what it was doing. But everything between so, you know, point A and point B, so you relocate them every two or three days, which is what we do, everything between those two points is kind of a black box. But we're missing a lot of the detail there. And that's where we sort of dipped into some of these cool emerging technologies. And so we're using things like accelerometers, which are like the same bits of tech that are in like smartwatches and phones and things like that, that track your steps. So we can get sort of like real time quantification of how much time the snake spends moving or still uh, feeding behavior. So we can quantify how many times they eat something or constrict something or strike in self-defense hopefully um, engage in reproductive behavior. Also, all, all, basically all the big things you want to know about an animal that's hard to study in nature. I wanted to bring another type of snake into our sample, uh, specifically a non-venomous one, because I think, you know, it gives people the opportunity to actually grab the snake, pick it up, you know, think of it a little more, uh, less scary, I guess. So we chose to do that. We kind of talked it through to figure it out, exactly what we wanted to do, which for me is comparing the spatial and temporal movements that Dr. Santos was talking about, we're comparing them between rattlesnakes and rat snakes to see basically how two large body predators like that are able to exist at such high densities within the same area. It's kind of confusing, right? If they're both eating the same stuff and they're both really big. How are they able to exist in really high densities in the same area? Being able to get out in the field and just walk around in the woods and be part of it but also being able to take something like that, like in the natural world, and then quantify it in a lab, right? Be able to say definitively, hey, the snake is doing this at this time or this time. I, I just really like that, I guess, uh, connection we're able to make. A lot of the things, a lot of the technology and a lot of the data analyses that we use are complex and um, computationally intensive and not things that you gain a whole lot of direct experience in through like undergraduate coursework, for instance. We're trying to change that. I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to embed a lot of this research and a lot of the techniques into my classes. It's, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah, they, they pick it up and most of them are independent within a month or two, tracking the snakes, coming up with new questions, new hypotheses to test, side projects. I mean, it's just, it's, it's been a thrill. Yeah, I've loved it. Students have been amazing. Being at such a great university with that small class sizes that allow me to forge that relationship with the professors. I don't think I'd be where I am today if I didn't have that.